So last week, we may have gone a little into the weeds we, on the book business. We got very inside baseball, mm-hmm. very uh, very industry nerd. So how about this week, we just get kind of more wide spectrum nerd? How, how about we talk about something people actually want to listen <laughs> to us talk about? Yes. By which we mean, of course, a food heist. I have yes. two food heists for you okay. this week uh, because they are related together. Uh, the first one, this is in the news now. This actually happened... Uh, in 2017. Okay. Well, it actually happened over the course of years and years and years. The guy was caught in 17 and then convicted in 2018 of stealing. Defrauding is a better word. So this is not a heist so much as a fraud. Okay, food fraud. A long con. Mm -hmm. Um, He stole $1.2 million worth of fajitas. Over time. Yeah, over, over since I think okay. 13 through 17 is when he's running it. So over the course okay. of about four years, what he was doing was he was uh, one of the administrators of a juvenile center uh-huh. in the Southwest somewhere. Okay. Uh, and he uh, basically kept buying with juvenile center funds fajita meat. And then instead of giving it to the juvenile center, he would sell it, you know, after hours... Oh, un- off the books to local restaurants and stuff. That's like and then your just pocket all the money. Classic bad guy from a bad teen right? movie. Like an 80s yeah. movie, your mm-hmm. bad guys were either land developers or people stealing money from community centers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what this guy was doing. He was caught. Um, he was sentenced to 50 years in prison. Wow. That's apparently what you get for stealing $1.2 million worth of fajitas. Yeah. Uh, he's up for parole next year. Okay. And so that's the article that I found. Um, the related heist is related only in that it is also $1.2 million worth okay. of cheese. That goes on fajitas. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, and it gets even better than that. This was two women who, again, were doing a long, years-long con uh-huh. uh, using food stamps uh, to basically buy just insane, ridiculous amounts of food. Um, so here's the list. They got 22.3 tons of of pinto beans, okay. 1.6 tons of coffee, 1.4 tons of instant mashed potatoes, mm. over 5,000 gallons of mayonnaise, and 49.1 tons of American cheese slices. Oh, okay. So cheese in the the most um, yeah l- liberal the least, interpretation the of the word. Cheese-like yes. cheese they could find. Uh, but still, $1.2 million worth of cheese stolen that I have to, like you, Connect those mentally. Well, you got a million dollars worth of hitas. What are you going to do? You get a million dollars worth of uh, cheese and beans and, I guess, mayonnaise. I don't know why you want that on your fajitas. I mean, but you do you, thieves. You use mayonnaise to make some ranch sauce, don't you? Or some various yeah, mix in tomatillo ranch. And do some things yeah. with it. Yeah. Mm, I so. don't know. Do you think, uh, do you eat American cheese? Um, I don't eat a lot of cheese because I'm mm. lactose intolerant. You know, I did order a gigantic chili relleno burrito for dinner yes. tonight yes. Uh, because uh, some things are worth it. Um, but yeah. Yeah. What's your opinion on American cheese? On American then? cheese? Yeah. I think American cheese slices, like mm-hmm. the prepackaged ones, they yeah. get a bad rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of people who think they're not cheese. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, they are cheese and most of them are just made of cultured milk. Uh, there's not like, it's not mm-hmm. chemicals. It's not Play-Doh. Uh, but it is... It is turned into cheese through a different chemical process, which is why it has such a weird texture to it and is so different from what we think of mm. as as real cheese. So I think it gets a bad rap, but at the same time, you know, I don't love it. Um, I <laughs> like it in um, certain circumstances. Yeah. There are some times I want it on a burger. Well, it the, melts really well. The cheaper the burger, the more I want it with American cheese. <laughs> the more fancy the burger, the more I want it with like a cheddar or mm-hmm. um, something like that. And yeah. the same way with like, I do like a nice grilled cheese with a fancy, fancy in quotes, right? Like a guere mm-hmm. is not that fancy, but you know, yeah. um, I like a nice um, grilled cheese that's using uh, a variety of cheeses. Yeah. But you know what? There's something to be said for grilled cheese with American. It tastes like childhood. It does, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I do think, you know, saying some kind of very normal yet mm. non-American cheese like Gruyere 
Mm-hmm. You know, you can buy that in any grocery store. Yes. And that still counts as fancy for grilled cheese because mm-hmm. 98% of the grilled cheese consumed is just plain old American cheese slices. Yeah. And sometimes that's what you want. It's a good melty cheese. It gives a good texture when you mm-hmm. grill it like that. Anyway. So and- speaking of American. American. Superheroes. Superheroes. We're only a couple months late because we couldn't talk about <laughs> No Way Home until Brandon had until seen it. Brandon saw it. And Brandon did not want to go to someone else's movie theater. He wanted to go watch it in his movie theater. Uh, and I have not found a way to get the first run movies yet. I'm yeah. trying. Um, but, but you um, have seen it now. I have now seen okay. Spider-Man No Way Home. No Way Home. So we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But I actually want to give an update on Arcane first. Oh, Do you okay. want to talk about that? Uh, yes, let's get an update on Arcane. Because I've watched the next three episodes of Arcane. Okay. And um, I... We, we did an episode about the first three episodes yes. of Arcane. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. So About, about 50% of it is about Arcane. <laughs> yeah. And this one we're only probably going to talk for five or ten minutes. Who knows? It's yeah. us. But mm-hmm. um, uh, an update on Arcane. Um, I see what you mean. Like the next... The first three episodes were... Like nine out of ten, um, perfect for what they're trying to be. Yeah. Um, only docked one point in that there is some cliched archetypes being used. Um, that, um, but I I really think that it was an excellent done, um, excellently done. Yeah. Next three, I'm uh, of more of two minds on. Still excellent, mm-hmm. right? Still very good show. Uh, they have upped their game. I feel like in the use of visuals. And in their use of music, uh, yeah. in these next three episodes, uh, d- and, does does episode yeah. six is that the one with, with the magic with, dragons? Uh, no, with uh. with uh, Echo and Jinx. Uh, n- uh, so we don't know it's Echo yet, but I guess that it was okay. Okay, um, so uh, that's got to be episode seven, um, because. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, wow, there's a masked figure who is a main antagonist, and the one person <laughs> we haven't seen yet is a little boy who's likely grown up right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder who that is. Who could that be? Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember yeah. uh, a specific so, fight scene that I don't think you've gotten to yes, yet. Yes, so. I, I hear that the best one is still coming. Okay, Uh Good. So episode six ends with them atop the like tower thing and Jinx is like shooting her minigun all around and the mysterious figures show up and uh, mm-hmm. and there's like the big old uh, kind of thing there and the flare held up in the yeah. air. Um, that was my phone wallpaper for a yeah. long time. <laughs> um, and so um, I think they have upped their game in a lot of ways cinematically, mm-hmm. uh, which I really like. Uh, really good job. They also have done... Um, an even better job in these three episodes of having all the characters have nuance. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I got done with these three episodes. I said to my wife, that's what this show is about. This show is about every everybody has nuance. Mm-hmm. Nobody has, you know, one motivation. Everybody is a mixed bag. All human beings are. Yeah. Um, and uh, Shades ev- of gray for everyone. Everybody, but in the good way, not in the shades of gray just to be dark Mm -hmm. shades of gray in that people are of two minds in a lot of situations and you often have conflicting moral uh or conflicting goods and uh motivations Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're just doing a really good job of that i enjoy that aspect of uh of the show uh and it's one of the reasons i would recommend it i have kind of one glaring sort of issue one major quibble that is more about me than the show i would guess and okay. that is i just do not like jinx at all mm-hmm. um and she drives me up the wall she was my f- favorite character in the first three as a little girl and i really don't like this broken sexy girl broken in quotes yeah uh the the harley quinn character mm-hmm. which is the Very- i Becoming a common archetype, right? Yes. That someone who is mentally ill, but also sexy. Like, look how easy it would be to take advantage of me. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. And which it, is really dirty. It, it, yeah. That makes me feel a little like that. And beyond that, it is it is a really sensationalized look at mental illness mm-hmm. um, that makes it look like a cool thing to have as a character quirk yeah. rather than... Uh, and now, I, 
if you've read any of my books uh, and yours as well, we like to delve into uh, psychology, mental yeah. illness, and the way that we humans interface that. with the world. That is that is something. And I feel like this archetype in general undermines a message of that because it is so, I don't want to say goofy, but it is really pop culture it's, it's really pop culture It's you, You've hit on my major complaint with the uh -huh. series is that I actually consider this uh, trope to be actively harmful. Mm -hmm. uh, someone who has mental illness is actually far less likely than the national yes. average to commit a violent crime. But when depicted in movies and television, they're something like 20 times more likely than a neurotypical person mm -hmm. to commit a violent crime. Uh, and it's a really harmful stereotype. Uh, you know, if she's seeing visions and has some kind of, you know, schizophrenia or whatever it is um, in the real world, that means she's a, you know, a victim. That yes. means that she is struggling with an illness. Uh, it's And yet in movies, it always is like, oh, well, now I'm a crazy murderer. Sexy murderer. Crazy sexy murderer, which makes uh -huh. it worse. I actually did not consider Jinx to be a, a sex symbol in the thing. Uh, I looked at her, and maybe this is because mm -hmm. it's such a ingrained thing for me mm -hmm. uh, uh, with this this mental illness pet peeve of mine. Uh -huh. um, she was such a broken character, and I really just wanted people to help her. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not the story that the middle section is telling. Uh, uh, her I, sister tries. Her sister tries. Her sister does. Her sister is not good at it, and I can't yeah. fault her for that because if you haven't been trained yeah. in how to help people with severe mental illness, you, no, you're not good yeah. at it. And that moment with the flare on the tower was really good. Yeah. The, again, the narrative storytelling has gotten very good, but this this bothers me. Be and beyond that, like, um, the level of death and destruction she has caused is making it hard for me to empathize with her. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, this comes from someone who has written Zeth. So I understand pot mm -hmm. calling uh, Kettle Black or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting over um, over that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. See, so, for me, yeah. and again, maybe this is just my own hobby mm -hmm. horse, but I look at most of that as Silco's fault. Because mm. Silco took this damaged person and turned her into a weapon, yeah. And she needs to be helped. Uh, but you're you're but, absolutely I right. Mean, even the amount of volition that takes away from her mm -hmm. uh, is anyway. Yeah. Uh, it just anyway. It's uh. It, it it is what it is. I assume they are locked into a character archetype that they built for a game that uh that they're kind of stuck with. Yeah. When you build a game, even when you build a large cast even if it's not for a game, one of the things you need to do is be like, all right, this person needs one attribute. What is this person's attribute? She's the cute girl who uses a giant minigun and smiles maniac man maniacally, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I assume that's who she is. And it's yeah. like, oh, I'm going to pick that one because who is a tiny, you know, spindly girl uh, with blue hair that uses a giant minigun and then has like wacky thing she says mm -hmm. uh it's harley quinn with a minigun instead of a hammer yeah got it and that's mm -hmm. what you need when you're making a game like they're making is lots of you can scroll through them and yeah. be like oh this is a this is a giant I, I orc know dude just by the mm -hmm. the avatar who that person yes is. i mean there's a reason why if you look at the i can look at the cast of um of the game you like overwatch and uh -huh. i'd be like oh i know exactly what the personalities <laughs> of each of these characters are and i can probably guess their class mm -hmm. and their their play style yeah um and you want to be doing that but then you go and you make a game and you're doing a lot of work to give everyone nuance but you are trapped with harley quinn and it's like yeah. what do you do in that case and mm -hmm. uh this is why i think it's more me than them, and I want to see the last three episodes, but that's kind of where I am on it. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I will uh, spoil nothing. Yes. Uh, but, very good. Uh, I am going to interrupt one more time before okay. we get to No Way Home, and I'm just going to let the viewers know uh, that I, I wanted to talk about Moon Knight, uh, but he hasn't seen that yet. I haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, the, I, I will say this. Mm -hmm. No spoilers, but the first episode of Moon Knight... I'm not going to say that it's the best thing in the MCU ever, mm -hmm. but I will say that it is the one that I most that most clearly and directly spoke to me. 
Awesome. It is directly about horror and mental illness, which mm. is my wheelhouse and what I've built my career on. Mm -hmm. And it felt so much like, oh yeah, this was made for me. I'm loving every bit of this. Uh, and so I'm excited at some point, we'll probably wait till we've both seen the whole thing if you yeah. intend to watch it. I will um, watch it on that recommendation, I yeah. will. We, we, we can come back a mm -hmm. few months from now and just talk about the series as a whole, but. Yep. But for now, let's talk about Spider-Man. Spider-Man. So, what did you think of Spider-Man No Way Home? Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, the first few hours, really loved it. Uh-huh. But by hour five or six, it was really starting to drag. Hour five or six. Um, this movie felt so felt much so longer long. than it really was for me. Okay. I liked it mm -hmm. a lot. It had incredible moments that brought me wonderful joy. Mm -hmm. uh, but it felt, uh, when, when, when I was done with the movie, I thought, wow, how did they get away with a four-hour movie? And it was, it's only two and a half hours. It just feels so long to me uh, because I have some problems with how they've paced some of it. Okay. Uh, I think you're... I didn't feel ever bored, mm -hmm. but when you say that, I'm like, wow, that movie felt long. So I'm on board with your criticism of it, <laughs> even though it wasn't a problem for me. Okay. Um, so I liked the movie quite a bit. I was bothered by a few things, and it's like the quintessential, this is why plot holes are not as big a problem as we sometimes think they are in nerd culture, uh -huh. even though we're likely going to talk about them because yeah. the emotional connection to the characters overcomes plot holes. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Um, I mean, we, we, yeah. call, uh, we call this refrigerator logic. Yes. If it's a problem you don't notice until after the fact when you're getting a snack, mm -hmm. then arguably it wasn't really a problem. Right. Or at least it's not as big a problem as you make it out to be. Yeah. The mm -hmm. movie might be better with it, but some of the plot holes that you could close, you could waste time closing a plot hole and ruin your pacing of your movie. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but we'll get into those. My afterwards, after I watched the movie, uh, like my first comment was uh, uh, William Defoe is a national treasure that was amazing. And Alfred Molina is only a, a hair step behind. Those two just made the movie for me. I actually liked Molina so much more than Defoe in this. I Defoe oh. really felt like just playing a a character of himself. I, don't I didn't know. get any nuance out of his out of the goblin. The moment where they cut and you think that the goblin is there getting um getting Aunt May at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And you cut there and he runs in and it is this man who is like trying yeah. so hard to understand what's happened to him and is mm -hmm. working with it. Like that moment saved it. Yeah. Um, that well, moment see that. turned it into, I am now sympathetic toward this, uh, toward this character. Uh, and I also kind of, I'm a little more okay. Like in the Spider-Man movies, what they're doing is they're often having a magical reason for someone to have a personality shift and they're, fixing it with mm -hmm. magical solutions. And I'm actually okay with that. You would think of our discussion of <laughs> uh, mental illness. I'm like, it's okay to create a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. That's what fantasy is about, right? And mm -hmm. saying, what if you were two people? It's a metaphor for mental illness. It doesn't have to be- It doesn't have know, to be actual DID. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the kind of the difference between this and Jinx is, for me at least, and Jinx, I may be overemphasizing, still a great show, mm -hmm. but is they're dealing with real trauma, creating a real, real life mental illness, and then are treating it very differently. Yeah. Um, whereas Green Goblin's like, I ingested green goo. Yeah. It made me split into a different person magically. And mm -hmm. this other person does things that I don't agree yeah. with. Let's take that premise and deal with what that does to a person. I find that really interesting. That's basically yeah. the same thing with all of the Spider-Man villains. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, um, we, mm -hmm. we, we should pause because I know we're going to get into it. We, yeah. we should say, obviously, we're going to talk about spoilers in yes. this conversation. We haven't yet, I think, said anything that wasn't in the trailers. Yes. Uh, but, but yeah. Um, and so watching him do the change. He is very good at yeah. going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you could always tell mm -hmm. which one was dominant obviously uh there were portions where the goblin was in charge and making yes. you think yes. that it was what's his mm -hmm. name 
um, Norman. Yes. Uh, but uh, but yeah, he did that really, really well. Mm-hmm. I didn't really buy him as uh, the ultimate villain that they wanted him to be. That's part um, of He didn't have yeah. a lot of emotional weight. I mean, he, he killed May and still didn't have a lot of emotional weight. I would weight. agree. And that is, that is a problem with the movie. I'll, I'll yeah. agree with you 100%. But uh, at the same time, I loved that. I loved both of their performances. Mm-hmm. And I really liked the two other Spider-Men. I liked yeah. that it wasn't into the Spider-Verse, which I still is my favorite Spider-Man movie, even oh, yeah. after this. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that they instead say, well, these two had arcs in their respective stories. And mm-hmm. we're going to close those arcs a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I saw a great meme that was like Tobey Maguire and panel one saying, man, my third movie was kind of bad. And then it was Andrew Garfield in the second panel saying, I didn't get a third movie. And then the third one, uh, it's the new Spider-Man. He's like, do you guys want to be in my third movie? Uh, And it kind of felt like that. Like, I like that they Mm -hmm. gave a mini closing arc to Andrew Garfield Mm -hmm. and a larger closing arc to Tobey Maguire and integrated them into the story. And actually, rather than just being cameos, it was about them to a lesser extent than, you know. Yeah. But... They did a really good job with that. They Hats did. off. Um, I really loved uh, all the stuff with the three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, watching them work together um, mm-hmm. in, you know, in the little laboratory at first and yeah. then on site. Um, Andrew Garfield is one of my very favorite actors right now anyway. Man, he um, was so good in this. I, yeah. I've, I've seen both of the other ones and I was, I didn't really like them. Either of the two, his the the, yeah. the Amazing Spider-Man movies were not great, but he was always great in them. And when he was in this, playing off the other ones, I'm like, I this give me more of this. Yeah, like I want Absolutely. as much Andrew Garfield in the MCU as well, I can get. And and he's been online. Like, mm-hmm. where were you guys ten years ago? Why weren't you supporting my movies back when they were canceling them? Um, it's because the movies were not the as movies good. were not as good as you were in them. Yes. And he brought all of that to this. Uh, like the moment where they're in the scaffolding and they're like, okay, I'm Peter one, you're Peter two. And he's the way he says, okay, I'm fine. I'm Peter three. Uh-huh. That was so perfect. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. Yeah. Uh, he was delightful. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and so those were, those were my pluses. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked the moment where Toby stops. Um, I, I'm trying to say, his, remember his name, the new Spider-Man kid. I say uh, Tom kid, Holland. he's like 28. Yeah. Tom Holland, uh, when uh, he stops him from killing Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a good moment. It was well done. It was acted with with emotion and no words. And yeah. like these are the things I liked about the movie. Um, I'm going to add to that. Uh, mm-hmm. I really like Zendaya. Yeah, she's good in everything. See, I've never seen her in anything other than the Spider-Man oh, movies. Did you see the, um, the um, Greatest Showman? Oh, that she is in that one, yeah. huh? Yeah, she's pretty good. I in did it. not like Greatest Showman, right? And I didn't really think anyone was great in it. And she was what the acrobat or something. Yes. Did, I here, don't know. She, she didn't even have a part. She didn't have a character. She was just there. We should talk Greatest Showman sometime because we should. I think all uh, the performances and the music are great, and that the story is trash. The story is terrible. The yes. historicity is yes, terrible, uh, unforgivable. Um, I really like. Yeah. Some of the songs mm-hmm. we'll, we'll we'll do a greatest we'll do a show episode, episode at some point. Um, um, but I I have heard so much about her. I know she's a big deal. Oh, that's, she was in Dune, but she's in like she's ten not minutes in much of, of Dune. Dune. Come yes. on, yes. Um, but she's got a TV show going that I've never mm-hmm. seen. She was a Disney star. I've never seen any of okay. that. The only thing I know her from is this, and I have been. Uh, I loved Far From Home. Mm-hmm. That is my favorite of the Marvel Spider Man movies. Uh-huh. Um, and she's wonderful in that, and she was wonderful in this. So I, I, I am sad that giving her as much mm-hmm. screen time, making her into another sidekick, mm-hmm. sidelined Ned, uh, and he didn't have much to do in this, and I'm sad about that, but she was great. I mean, their interactions, all three of them, was great. And mm-hmm. I liked just how... Uh, and this is this is the MCU writers. I think this is an intentional thing on their part. Though they're saying, let's involve the side characters more mm-hmm. and have give them more volition. Um, and you watch this, I feel over time, um, kind of culminating in Shang Chi, um, where you know uh, Aquafina is as much a character 
as yeah, Shang-Chi she was a is. co-lead in that yes. one. Um, and I like that. It gives the just more to do, more mm-hmm. story, more characters. Yeah. Um, and this kind of did that a bit. So yeah, I'll agree that with that. Uh, shall we talk about what we didn't like? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> Go. Uh, well, really for me, it all came down to the pacing. Uh, mm. And I'm not even sure, I haven't taken the time to like parse this through and say, if I were to redo it, what would I cut or what would I change? Uh, but it felt like there were, you know, five or six acts when we are accustomed to three. Not that there was too much story, mm-hmm. but that the way the story was compartmentalized felt like there were several obvious act breaks, which kind of tricked me into thinking we're closer to the end than we are. Mm. And I'm and and so that again, like you said with Jinx, that might be a me thing right. rather than an everybody else thing. Uh, but yeah, there were there were parts where it really was just like, why? You know, by the time that the uh, the the two extra Spider Men show up, mm-hmm. we've already had three full acts of story, mm-hmm. and I just I was like, when? What is going on? How much more of this is there? So um, I'll start with some smaller things and then kind of work up to my larger thing. Okay. Um, smaller thing, I feel like Alfred Molina returning after they have saved him was underplayed and could have been more triumphant. Definitely. Um, like the Hard whole agree. arc is we should help these people rather than just throwing them in prison. It's mm-hmm. a good kind of conceptually moral message that we as yeah. a society, it has real world applications. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's try and help these people. And then when he returns, they it was just like, it was kind of glossed over. And Well, it was glossed over and yeah. it was also played for a mini fake out. Yes. Which yeah. you've already redeemed this guy. Yeah. We don't have to see we don't need him a mini fake redeemed out. again. That, uh, and that's the thing that really, like your message of your movie is that these people are worth saving. Mm-hmm. He needs to show up like Gandalf did at the end of Two Towers <laughs> and yeah. just be there on the good guys uh, team. Mm-hmm. And Which they mm-hmm. almost did. Yes. They just spent... Yeah, fifteen extra seconds faking yep. us out to make him mm-hmm. make it, and he didn't even really gain anything by tricking them that way, nope. and he didn't really even accomplish that much to help them. Yeah, um, and so I wanted that moment to be to be better, mm-hmm. um, slightly larger, but still a smaller thing. Doctor Strange is out of character in every movie he's not the lead in, right? <laughs> Um, yes. and it kind of bothers me how much, and that's, that's the case a little bit with their cameo things, but Dr. Strange's personality changes wildly based on how much of a character he is in a, in a movie. Well, see that part mm-hmm. works for me because I always see it as this is the laid back attitude he projects to other people. Uh huh. And so he is different when we're in his POV. Um, I don't know if that's consistent enough to I mean, be a good explanation. That's a decent explanation, but it doesn't yeah. explain why... Why he's willing to break reality. Willing to break reality, and while he's not prepared for a teenager asking him a few questions. Yeah. This is... He defeated Dormammu through fear, sheer force of will. He lived... Yeah, through patience. A hundred thousand times, and... He has a kid saying, oh, can you make it so that my mom... Okay, he just goes in to cast the spell, doesn't ask for parameters ahead of time, doesn't think through this. He's mm-hmm. so out of character. Yeah. Um, in that moment, that I'm like, Doctor Strange should be able to deal with a teenager asking questions. Mm-hmm. I have to deal with that every day, <laughs> and yeah. I am not a superhero, not super smart, not... You know, mm-hmm. I haven't saved the world even a single time, yeah. and he's done it multiple times. Well, and there's something to be said for... You know, he's not a dad. He's not accustomed to teenagers. Yeah. But like mm-hmm. you said, most of his faults were not inability to handle yes. kid. It was, I went into this with a bad plan that I didn't think through and right. it prepared nothing. Like this movie, I, I understand that it's a good joke that he can't handle a teenager. Mm-hmm. This movie, for me as a guy who loves Doctor Strange, would have been in uh, increased in... Um, I would have loved it a lot more if something he didn't have control over caused the spell to go haywire. 
Yeah. Uh, the multiverse is now breaking because of things that Wanda did or people, everyone did. Yeah. Uh, not Wanda, uh, Loki did. N- the spell doesn't work the same way anymore because the multiverse exists now. Holy crap, I, Doctor Strange, have to figure out what's going wrong. Mm-hmm. I'll have my own movie, but for right now, things are crazy. Yeah. And I need to lock this down. And, uh, and rather than... I got discombobulated because uh, Tom Holland asked me three different times a question. Uh, just <laughs> yeah. feels... And he kept asking for things. I think that mm-hmm. that solution is mm-hmm. is also what I would have done. Yeah. You know, there's a moment at the in the final episode of mm-hmm. Loki... Yeah. That lines up perfectly with yes. one of the final epi- one of the final moments of WandaVision. Yep. Uh, where it is clearly that is the moment where the multiverse breaks. Yes. And if they had taken the time to line up a moment during the spell yes. with that, then perfect. You, you know, show some of the the mm-hmm. red funky Wanda magic and maybe uh, throw in Loki yeah. or or something so that we know as an audience that just happened. During your spell, the multiverse broke, and that's what caused all this. That would have that would have solved the major problem, which is not even you can't handle a kid. It's mm-hmm. why did you do this in the first place if it was so dumb and dangerous? Yes, exactly. If it wasn't dumb and dangerous when he started and mm-hmm. became dumb and dangerous halfway through, yeah. you've just solved 17 problems with your story. Well, and also I think that Tom Holland isn't then responsible for potentially the end of the world. Mm-hmm. He, he said in... T- like in this, by by being dumb and asking questions, when the wizard breaking reality told you to stop, yeah. like he went a little too far in for me to be like this all is Peter's fault in this movie. It's selfishly kind of yeah. Peter's fault. And I understand his motivations. They did a good job with that. There's nothing wrong with the way they did the motivations. I just want it to have spiraled out of control. Not because he's a dumb teenager asking questions, but because things outside their control, they were playing with fire and they didn't know that gasoline was going to get poured on it. Yeah. Uh, It's still their fault. But anyway, so that's, uh, and you know, like Dr. Strange Loki's another one that his, his power suit suite varies depending on the moment. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. Strange's power suite varies depending on the moment. He was able to may open a portal and drop Loki uh, for a half hour. Through mm-hmm. a void. Yeah. He chooses not to do that with Tom Holland, even though he opens numerous portals in front of Tom Holland that he has to go through. Yeah. It's just saying, all right, you're trapped in a void for a half hour. Are you ready to come out now? Um, I, I don't mm-hmm. know why Doctor Strange doesn't it's, do... It's very, you know, Super Friends yes. logic, right? Yeah. Superman could only shoot lasers out of his eyes when the writers remembered that he yes. could shoot lasers out of his eyes. Um. So those are those well, are quibbles. And and while while we're quibbling about the mm-hmm. use of magic, it really bothered me. And I know this was just because they gave all the good Ned stuff to Zendaya, and yes. so they needed to give something to Ned. Mm-hmm. It took years of study and redemption arc for Doctor Strange to know how to open portals. Yes, and Ned can do it accidentally. Yeah, in I like did not thirty like that seconds either. of trying. I I like Ned becoming a wizard. That's a good move. It's a good move. Gives him something. It adds to his character. Um, but but if they had even gone, it still would have been problematic, but less so. Mm-hmm. If he's like holding, you know, the mm-hmm. Doctor Strange ring and he's like, I bet there's plenty of vids on YouTube <laughs> where, where like bystanders have filmed Doctor Strange fighting somebody. Mm-hmm. I'm going to watch all of those and try to copy what he does. Mm-hmm. That would yeah. have helped explain it a little bit more than just... Yeah, the the you dumb lucked into it. Yep, I I agree with this. Um, I mean, what the best thing would have been to do is think of this in uh, Homecoming and start laying some groundwork so that by now, you know, he's always been interested in the occult. He's got a Doctor Strange poster in his room. You, but you can't yeah. do that. They decided this last minute. Well, last minute for this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, good quibble. I like that quibble. Yeah. All right, you want you ready for my big one? What's your big one? My big one is that unlocking four supervillains from their magical chambers and taking them together to your house is the dumbest thing a character has ever done in the MCU. Creating Ultron was less <laughs> dumb than doing this. These are super-powered supervillains who are all mentally unstable. Mm-hmm. If you're going to take them, take them one at a time. Better is to go get the equipment you want Bring yeah. it to your place, work with them in their cells, cure them one at a time. I was just 
floored. And this is why it's an actual big problem. Not This isn't refrigerator mm-hmm. logic. In the movie, I'm like, surely you're not doing this. Yeah. You are not letting four supervillains out because Jamie Foxx is like, mom, you know, I'll probably kill you guys all, but whatever. Like, mm-hmm. and then they just cut to the house and they're walking in. And I'm like, yeah. And and, and there was, yeah, it, it's incredibly foolish. Yeah. Uh, they've got Doctor Strange trapped. Yes. Uh, for, you know, mm-hmm. as, as long as they need him trapped. It's not yes. like they had to change locations. I um, mean, just baffling to me. And it it really threw a pallor over the movie for me. It was so hard because, and now having watched it, like you're again, like your character's stupid action causes Aunt May to die. Mm-hmm. Not Aunt May's empathy, which is what the actual story is. The actual yeah. story is she's empathetic enough that she's willing to take the risk. She pays the consequences. That's heroic. Mm-hmm. She's not refrigerated. She's not fridged. She made a decision with eyes open, tried to help people, and there were consequences. That's a heroic death. Yeah. Good job, Aunt May. But the fact that they were that uh, that Tom Holland was so stupid as to bring them all <laughs> was okay. That is stupid, but it is also, to be fair, in character for Spider Man. Right, okay. like the two major deaths mm-hmm. in the comics. Yes, uh, Uncle Ben. Yes. and Gwen Stacy are, are both directly yes, Spider Man's fault. They are for being dumb, and so I mean, Gwen Stacy arguably less dumb than just you know whatever. But but this story yeah. is not about Tom Holland realizing that he's making stupid decisions. Right, that's not your theme. No. Um, right. He the, like he the and the the movie does not frame letting these supervillains and take it frames it as dangerous, mm-hmm. but a choice you should make to be empathetic to yeah. trying to help people. That's the story's message. That's that that's it was true. right to let the four violent criminals out of their mm-hmm. cages and take them to your home and help yeah. them rather than finding a system and a way that they're protected from themselves and others are and saving them then. Mm -hmm. Like the message is not we should let all the violent criminals out of the prison system. The message should be our prison system is bad and doesn't work. Let's find a way to actually help these people. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's a good point. He Mm -hmm. does, I mean, it it is overall a, a, not really a redemption arc for Mm -hmm. Peter, um, it is Peter, you know, trying to help everybody and trying to save everybody. And that moment is, and, and that's another reason that I think the pacing is so weird in it uh-huh. is that is such a major, you know, inciting incident uh-huh. that happens way after your inciting incident. Um, so yeah. anyway, that, uh, that's my big flaw with the movie. Mm-hmm. My big beef with it. The, the quibbles are not as big a deal. Uh, yeah. Then the movie works, um, but man, that that one was real hard pill for me to swallow. Um, yeah, um, I mean that was you. Your your favorite is the second one. The second one's pill of Tony Stark left him with the ability to just assassinate people and things like that. I just could not swallow. Um, and so both of mm-hmm. them have had these giant pills. They're both still good movies. Yeah, but yeah, they, they, um, there's definitely problems. Um, mm-hmm. None of them, I will say, have. Uh, the Vulture, you know, mm-hmm. Homecoming. Yes. Um, Vulture's arguably one of the very best villains in all of the MCU. Oh, yeah. Um, and Homecoming was was a really, really solid one. Um, I liked Far... I, I'll, I'll give Far From Home the the leg up, uh, maybe just because of Zendaya in it. I don't mm. know. Uh, but um, let's talk about the villains a, a little bit. Okay. Um, because I thought... You know, one of the things that I loved about this, you know, not only did they go back and, and have a chance to, like, finish Andrew Garfield's arc mm-hmm. and, you know, let him save the girl who's falling mm-hmm. you know, where, where he uh, accidentally killed Gwen Stacy earlier. Yep. Uh, they did the same thing with Jamie Foxx. Mm-hmm. I thought he was really underserved by... His movie. His movie. I agree. And this one, he had so much more personality... He got to be more interesting. We got to see his face. Yep. Uh, it just... Uh, they did was, a really good job with him. Uh, I would say um, the one that was most underserved was Sandman mm-hmm. uh, because he was the best part, in my opinion, of his movie. Yeah. 
I agree. Um, and I thought, and they faked us out when right at the beginning when he shows up and he protects Spider-Man. I mm-hmm. thought, oh, he's going to be really complex and interesting. <laughs> no. And he, then he has no more moments through the entire movie. Yeah, he didn't um, really have a character yeah. at all. I don't actually consider this a flaw, though, because the fact that you had to pack that many characters in mm-hmm. uh, and they did such a good job with the other ones, I'm like, the lizard and him just have to be there. I understand that. I accept that movie. It can't be any longer. Yeah. Um. And, you know, one of the things that this movie did is like really kind of flexing on Spider-Man 3. Because it's like, oh, you had trouble mm-hmm. doing three villains, did you? Well, check we, this out. We're going to do three really pretty good villain arcs with a, several really good hero arcs all in one movie, mm-hmm. and we're not going to have any problems with it. Yeah. Um, I, I also think it's interesting, just from a storytelling point of view, uh, which villains they didn't use. Yeah. They had two different iterations of Harry Osborn that yep. they didn't bother bringing back. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had Topher Grace's Venom. Yep. When they didn't bother with him at all. Smart move, probably. I, I yeah. think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, post credit scene where they had uh, Tom Hardy yes. as Venom uh, was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and I, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to speculate on future connections between Sony yeah. and, and MCU movies, but uh, the, the villains they chose, I thought they did a good job with. Yeah. And uh, I was really glad. Also, uh, we haven't mentioned the other villain, which was uh, Jonah Jameson. Yes. Uh, changing him from a newspaper man to like, uh, you know, an InfoWars guy yep. was so smart. And they did a really good job with, <laughs> I mean, I loved seeing him back in the in the role and he, yeah. he was great. He's just, he's just great. That was, that was awesome. Uh-huh. Um, born to play that role and did it so well and glad to see him back. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. Uh, what do you think of Aunt May becoming Uncle Ben for Tom Holland? Um, I liked it. I yeah. didn't like it until the rooftop scene where they all talk about Uncle Ben. Uh huh. And they say the line. Yep. Uh, and when he, uh, because when she said the line and mm-hmm. died, I thought, well, okay, I knew you were going to die in this movie because all the signs were there. Uh, but saying the line felt like too much fan service. It felt mm-hmm. over the top to me, and I thought that didn't land as well as I wanted it to land. But then when he's on the rooftop and they introduce him to the other two Peters, mm-hmm. and that same line mm-hmm. is like a key moment for both of them, that worked really well for me. That was pure Spider Man fan service in a way that landed 100%. What I liked about it is that as much as I love the line, it's one of the great lines from comics, mm-hmm. in Sam Raimi, Raimi's Spider-Man one, it cut, it's, it's fine, but it doesn't really land and because Peter doesn't have power in the opening of that movie, and Uncle Ben doesn't know, right? Like, mm-hmm. Aunt May knowing you are Spider-Man, you have a responsibility to be, to be better than than everyone else yeah is a really powerful like take this is like the only uncle ben moment that i've seen where they know he's spider-man and can reference being spider-man is a big responsibility yeah rather than it just being you know peter you have a responsibility to you know be on time to your job or something uh with great power comes great response. i understand how you have mm-hmm. to play it in the, mm-hmm. the strip story but since we've had that several times and now we can get this version it was nice yeah, um, it and, was. And it was, like mm-hmm. you said earlier, you know, his redemption arc was not the theme of the movie. This was. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's interesting that he thought, no, I have to help all these people. I have to save yeah. them. I have a mm-hmm. responsibility. And then everything goes wrong. And May tells him the line is like, nope, you're on the right track. Mm-hmm. Don't give up just because I'm dying. Um, that worked for me as well. Right. I, I consider a, a theme of some of my writing is that sometimes by doing, making the difficult and good decisions, there will be consequences. And mm-hmm. so I want those consequences to not be Peter's fault because of stupidity. I want them to be his fault because he actively chose something that is dangerous. Yeah. But was, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, uh, I just I'm going to put feeling... myself on the line to help you uh, one at a time. 
And then I get Goblin out of the cells, and he's the one that busts everyone free. Yes. And then it all goes wrong. Or, you I know, don't know. Something like that. Who knows? Or maybe catching Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Now his power is cut off, and they all get freed. To, I don't know. Yeah. We could speculate forever, but oh, yeah. you could do. You could actually do that. The the cells all drop. Yeah. Spider Man's like, don't attack. Listen, mm-hmm. listen to me. And then they're all free. He can't put them back in. He gets them corralled. And yeah. um, they're like, we can't stay here. The guy, the wizard goes, he's like, all right, I'll take you. I've got a lab. The, you, could, you just fixed it. Yeah. That fixes it right by he, itself. He comes back from the other dimension. He says, hey, Ned, hey, mm-hmm. MJ, don't worry. I've neutralized Doctor Strange. And they're like, uh, yeah, no doy. Look behind you. And mm-hmm. he realizes they're all there. Yep. Man. Good we job, Ben. It. Oh, wait. You're not Ben. Good job. Good job, Good Dan. job, Ben. Good job, Ben. Good job, ben.